My name is Ron Daniels. I'm president of the Institute of the Black World 21st Century. They got Herb Boyd in the right seat. I thought I saw a seat over there for Herb Boyd. Y'all got him straight? Mess with Herb Boyd now. I mean, you get me in trouble if you mess with Herb Boyd, all right? I saw Deborah Peterson Small, and she and her, and she, does she have, she's, 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 all right. So I don't think Deborah, I saw her, but want to make sure she's in position, right? Well, we've had a great time here in uh, what we used to call back in the day, New Ark. Has everybody enjoyed themselves so far? Well, we're going to do some celebrating tonight. We're going to do some celebrating. That celebration will be in three phases. First of all, we're going to have what we used to say back in the day, some edutainment. Because we have a dynamic group, young leaders, all the way from the Bronx, who are going to be performing for you in short order. And then we're going to present our legacy awards. And then after that, there's a room where you can just go party and have a good time, but not too late, because in the morning, bright and early, we have to be ready for Dr. Mylana Karinga and the Honorable Minister Lord Swearcon to close it out, okay? And that means, by the way, you need to be in line. Those of you who have with your badges or your reserved seats, that's those of you who are, you know, are the Legacy Award, I mean, you're with your premium registrations, in line, ready to go at 8 o'clock. So you got to rise early. So that's why I don't want y'all to hang out too, too late tonight, you know. So I'm going to be daddy for y'all, you know. So everything will go smooth. Okay. All the way, again, from the Bronx, we had this group with us in 2012. And it is an organization that helps to train and mentor young people. Many of those who were here four years ago have gone away to school, to colleges and universities. They are led by a very dynamic African-centered leader, Lola Lewis. And she just takes such great pains with helping to organize and train these young leaders. Uh, indeed, uh, she is a performer in her own right. And she is, again, a very passionate advocate. So we said we wanted to bring them back this year. And we went through great pains to make that happen because it's good for them to have the experience of meeting you and you meeting them. So without further ado, we want to bring on the lowest, the conscious ones, the conscious ones of the lowest, lowest creative and performing arts studio from the Bronx. Let's bring them on. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Lola Louise, creative and performing arts studio, proudly presents the new Conscious Ones with their interpretation of Maya Angelou's poem, Still I Rise, directed by Lola Louise.
Another round of applause for the conscious ones, the lower, the new conscious ones, the lower, lowest, lower, Lola Lewis Creative Performing Arts Studio. You know, Fire Rose to Ray. I'd like to raise some money and bring them to Selma. I mean, that would be great, right? If we, if we just had some money, we could do some real things, right? Okay, so now we're going to begin with our awards for this evening. First and foremost. We have spread the awards throughout the program. And so there are those who have already received their legacy awards, but we want to at least re-acknowledge them. Among those who have already received their awards, and if they're in the audience, they can at least stand and give a wave, are all the way from Barbados. Attorney Bobby Clark is here. Many of you know Don Rojas. Don Rojas. I don't know if Don's in the house or not. Don Rojas. Dr. Walter Stewart and Esmeralda Brown have already received their awards. I don't know. I guess they'll probably be arriving. And Imam Talib Abdul Rashid. Let's give him a round of applause. And the inimitable one, and he's in the house, I know. And what a giant, both literally and figuratively, Randy Wesson. Randy Wesson, right? Also, Al Van, Al Van, all of you know Al Van, right? And I think that exhausts the list. Is Sister Frederica Bay in the house? Is she here yet? Sister Frederica's not here? Okay, because she was going to accept for Viola Plummer, but that award has already been presented as well. Sister Viola Plummer. (laughs) 
So now let's get started with the awards for today. I, I forgot to mention Muriel Fignon Mendes France. She was here, the daughter of France Fignon was here. She's now departed and gone back to France. Dr. Julius Garvey as well. Now we'd like to wel welcome to the stage and we want you to stay until we have gotten a photo op. Attorney Ajua Ayatoro, would you please come to the stage? And the award says, Attorney Ajua Ayatoro, major contributor to the struggle for human rights, reparations, and co-chairperson of the National Coalition for Blacks for Reparations in America, and co-chairperson of NCOBRA. The energetic one, Attorney Nkichi Taifa. <laughs> and this reads for your courageous lifetime service in the cause of reparations, criminal justice policy reform human rights, and the liberation of African people. And Tony and Kichi Taifa. Ronald Hampton. Exemplary pioneer, exemplary pioneer leader, police association. And for years, your years of tireless and uncompromising dedication to police restructuring, that's your term, <laughs> and criminal justice policy reform, Ronald Hampton. Deborah Peterson Small. And it reads, for your visionary, courageous and relentless leadership at the forefront of the struggle to end the war on drugs and to create safe, just, and humane communities for people of African descent. Deborah Peterson Small. Attorney Jill Sophia Elijah. For your tireless dedication to defending and freeing political prisoners and prisoners of war and advancing the struggle for human rights for people of African descent, attorney Jill Sophia Elijah. People's attorney.
uh, Dr. Take No Nonsense. Oh, I'm sorry, not no nonsense. I mean, I'm sorry, Dr. Julianne Malvo. Dr. Julianne Malvo, President Emeritus, Bennett College for Women, for your outstanding service as an educator, author, political commentator, and Black America's leading political economist, Dr. Julianne Malvo. Thank you, Brother. Ron Chisholm, way from down the Bayou country. <laughs> Ron Chisholm, for keeping the vision of help us make a nation. I forgot about that, didn't you? For keeping the vision of help us make a nation called human alive through the People's Institute as the premier anti-racist training institute in the United States and the world, Ron Chisholm. A round of applause for that group. Okay, next. The inimitable Tony Broder. Whoa! Hey, what I'm talking about. <laughs> it. Tony Broder, inspirational Egyptologist, renowned educator, archaeologist, and the first African American to excavate a tomb in Egypt. This brother is bad. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. Dr. Jackie Mayfield. You know, you come to these conferences, you see people. I go to uh, Power Networking Conference every year. Now, this man is decked out in a blue suit and all that, so you never know. Then I found out this morning he's one of the founders of the Deacons for Defense. <laughs> Down in Boogaloosa. I mean, you know, now I'm scared of you now. <laughs> anyway, one of the co-founders, Dr. Dr. Jackie Mayfield, for your visionary leadership as a socially conscious Black entrepreneur, founder and CEO of Comprotax, humanitarian and philanthropist, Dr. Jackie Mayfield. He said he was just a foot soldier, which means he was even more dangerous. <laughs> Brother man, Herb Boyd. Yeah. 
I call him Brother Man because it's my brother. <laughs> and he wrote that book called Brother Man, you know, ever since then. I, for your lifetime of service as a prolific, don't even, don't, I mean, he's prolific. Author, journalist extraordinaire, griot, educator, and progressive social and political activist. That's my Brother Man, her boy. Come on. Come on. This is Rio. <laughs> Now we're so sorry that this brother here was not able to be here. I mean, I will always, but this this brother also, and they're they're like, you know, they like they work very closely together. Emotep Gary Bird could not be here, but accepting for him is her boy. The inimitable, incomparable, African-centered master communicator, village teacher for a half century of the global black experience and other mediums of information, inspiration and action for sisters and brothers in New York and the pan-African world. If that don't describe Emotep Gary Bird, I don't know what does. Emotep Gary Bird. <laughs> what if you ain't if you sleep this one person in this house will show enough wake you up the reverend joanne watson is in the house from detroit Lord have mercy. <laughs> Reverend Joanne Watson, for your lifetime service, quote, waking up black people and the oppressed as an agency administrator, educator, faith leader, radio talk show host, and elected official, Reverend Joanne Watson. I don't think Charles and Inez Barron are here, it doesn't look like, but I'll read those anyway. I'm, let me just read it anyhow. They're not here. Okay, well, we'll read those anyway. Charles and Inez Barron, for courageous, courageous leadership as partners in revolutionary service to black people and the oppressed, as educators, community organizers, and progressive elected officials. Let's give it up for them anyway, Charles and Inez Barron. Is Jaziri X here? Okay, Jaziri X was supposed to accept from someone. He's not here. Okay, so therefore we'll get this. We got to have them too many.
just a moment. We actually missed one in that block, but we'll have it momentarily. Now, I want Reverend Joanne Watson and Brother Randy Weston to be prepared to come up and to say some words on behalf of the whole group. So just alerting you. That's kind of how we do it. But we have one more here that we um, Okay, accepting for James Ntume. You know, I was telling Ntume, Brother Akbar, the other day, Harry Belafonte once said that if you can get them to sing your song, you know, we know the banana boat song, right? But Lord, how mercy, how many times have we heard Juicy Fruit? <laughs> James Ntume. Accepting for James Ntume is Akbar Muhammad. James and Tume, legendary Grammy Award winning musician, brilliant composer, prolific songwriter, political commentator, radio activist, and fierce proponent of the liberation of black people. James and Tume. And now we shift categories. We have what we call Pan-African Service Awards. And these are the people are for people who are outstanding in their own right, but they also have a particular relationship to the Institute of the Black World 21st Century. People who have served us, who have been loyal, who have been dedicated, people who have worked hard on our behalf. And the first of, all of those goes to the baddest organizer on the planet, as far as I'm concerned, Brother Greg Akili. Greg Akili, master organizer, master trainer, cross generational mentor committed social and political activist, and a founding member of the board of the Institute of the Black World 21st Century, Greg Akili. Thank you so much, Ron. Nia Body Murphy. Nia Body Murphy. It's a master producer. If there were ever a master producer, it's this brother. And we've been working together for a long time. A lot of memories here. Show us decked out shrimp, brother. How come you don't let me have some of that? That African marketplace y'all see out there? That's Body Murphy. Global producer par excellence, pan-African entrepreneur, social and political activist, and consistent supporter of the Institute of the Black World 21st Century, Nia Body Murphy. Now we have someone who was not able to be with us uh, to this evening, but accepting it will be uh, Nia Body Murphy. Uh, this is a lot of you may not know this brother. It's a bad brother raised in the cotton fields, but this is a this brother is bold and bad. He go places that he just kicked the door down and go up in there. His name is Joe Beasley. Wow. Joe Beasley. Some of you know Joe Beasley. <clears throat> Courageous. African-centered ambassador. We have been dubbed, we've dubbed him ambassador to the Pan-African world, the poor and dispossessed, 
and reliable ally of the Institute of the Black World 21st Century. Give it up for Joe Beasley. Joe Beasley. And we have one more. Was that one on the program? Oh, what, how did that happen? Rick Adams. <laughs> Rick Adams. I don't know how this happened, brother. I, I mean, you're the chair. You're the, you're the chairman of the board. How, how did you give yourself? A, how? Rick Adams, veteran social and political activist, progressive educator, and dedicated, consistent, committed, steady, selfless chairman of the board. Chairman Rick, selfless chairman of the board of the Institute of the Black World, 21st Century. We thank you so much. We're gonna allow you to say a few words. Oh yeah. I will try not to abuse the right to say a few words. You know, I can be windy, long-winded at times. Y'all, y'all really caught me off guard. But now I understand. Particularly, some of the sisters would tell me I had to dress up. So I should have thought about that, but I thought because being chair, that's why they were saying I should be appropriate. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, you have taken, uh, really it's hard to be for me anyway, to be with a loss of words, but I am. But let me just say that uh, being able to serve with the brothers and sisters on the board and all of you all in this room, it to me is like the supreme uh, reward of, I don't even know what word could really fit the gravity of how I feel about some of the brothers and sisters in here because, uh, I mean, you're my heroes and you're people I've read and you've helped instruct and guide me. Um, this brother, we've been, what, hanging since Gary, 72, and have been through a lot of things. And the thing that I like, we share that passion that I think it was uh, Les Brown who said, it ain't over till we win. And that's my attitude. It ain't over until we win. So I'm glad uh, that uh, I'm here at this point. I'm just glad to be on the planet as a black man and that uh, this latest fight that's before us. Uh, I'll just tell you this. Uh, a white colleague at the college where I work asked me, was I still crying or was I over crying? And I said, what do you mean? What are you talking about? And I knew it was about the election, right? Because we had been talking about the election and what a tragedy it would be if you know what happened that happened. But anyway, I said, no, I've been smiling. So she said, smiling? And she looked puzzled. And I said, well, I don't know if you follow sports, but some of us will remember, especially uh, boxing aficionados, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard fighting Wilfred Benitez, who either at the time or later was even his uh, brother-in-law. But in the fight, they butted heads. And a fairly thick stream of blood ran down his forehead. So we're all watching this and we're like, oh man, are they going to stop the fight or what's getting ready to happen? And I always remember, and we fell out laughing at the time, that he simply smiled and threw his hands up. And my point was, let's get it on. <laughs> so I couldn't be in a better crowd of people to get it on. I want to uh, send a shout out to my partner, Michelle Benet, who, uh, inspires me, and I'm glad she was here to witness this. Thank you all. This is better, th this is better than when I fell off the stage yesterday. Okay, let's give it up. Let's give it up.
we were la we were laughing. Rick and I were laughing. I'm president and he's chairman of the board. I had a denture denture malfunction. <laughs> And he almost fell off the stage. <laughs> that was one hell of a night. <laughs> and now I'd like to welcome uh, two of our elders who just sort of, on behalf of all of the awardees, provide some words of wisdom briefly, because I don't want it to get too long because it's party time. Uh, but let's welcome first, uh, Randy Weston, would you come and just share some words with us? And let me say, as he approaches the stage, uh, one of the other honorees has now arrived. I was looking for him earlier. Professor James Small is in the house. Where would I think I saw him. Where's he at? I thought I saw him come in. There he is, Professor James Small. He received his award on Monday. Let's give it up for Randy Weston. What an incredible man this is, Randy Weston. My brother, our brother. Let's give it up. Gotta get up dog. <laughs> I don't quite know what to say because uh, I wish I had a piano here. I could say it better. But there's so much love in this place. And I'm so inspired to spend three days seeing my people, loving each other, talking to each other, hugging each other, and showing our future. Ron, this is the most incredible experience, you know. This year has been so spiritual for me. I was honored in Panama in January. I was in Senegal on New Year's Eve. And, and from that point on, the spirit of Langston Hughes arrived. BBC came to my house and they're doing a 19 part series on Langston Hughes. And I thought about Langston because we collaborated in 1960 with the great Melba Liston, the Freedom Africa Suite, where we had people like Baba Tunio Latunji from Nigeria, Candido from Cuba, Max Roach, Freddie Hubbard. We put together 28 artists from different parts of the world to show that we are African people and we speak a lot of different languages and wear different clothes, but we're the same folks because it's that African pulse that unites us. And I grew up with the black church. I grew up with a Marcus Garvey father. When I was six years old, my dear Panamanian father, he said to me when I was six, he said, listen here, boy, I'm gonna tell you one thing that you ever forget. He said, you are African born in America. And you're going to be surrounded with slavery and colonialism. But he said you have to study the great African empires. So as a boy, I would go to the museums and I would go to the bookstores to read about ancient Africa. And I got so inspired. He gave me J.A. Rogers. He gave me Chester Williams, all the great. And in our house was many maps of African kings and queens. My latest endeavor, which is a double CD, is called The African Nubian Suite. And it's a collaboration, something I never did before. It was magic. Uh, the great Jane Cortez, I, I wanted to have her in this work. And we started off with the sister, they call her R.D. Pithecus. They found her in the Ethiopian desert. She was four and a half million years old. It took 20 years to put her together, University of Chicago and also the the artists in, in Ethiopia, they put her together. And I was so inspired by this. And Professor Wayne Chandler does a narration. And the whole idea is what happened when the first African saw a tuba? What did he do with it? What happened when the first African saw a piano? What did he do with it? It simply means that the creation of music happened in Africa. Our ancestors created music by being in touch with the galaxies. Each planet has got its own rhythm. Each planet has got its own sound. So the whole concept of music comes from Mother Nature. And our ancestors, they knew this. And that's why the music is such a powerful spiritual base for us. I spent seven years in Morocco, traveling around, listening to all kinds of traditional music. I went to 18 countries in Africa, trying to find the oldest people I could find, listen to the oldest music I could listen to. 
And I suddenly realized that we come from greatness. We come from royalty. We come from great, great, great people. And the further we go back, I'm still discovering Louis Armstrong, what he did. We don't know what Louis did. He created something that never happened before. Duke Ellington created a music that never happened before. I benefit from Duke and Nat King Cole and Count Basie and Art Tatum, but they had nobody before them. They created the music of the 20th century. And I can tell you, the most difficult thing to do is create new music. Because many notes have been played on this planet for thousands and thousands of years. And Duke and Basie and Billie Holiday, that's our revolutionary, Mahalia Jackson, these great artists. And that's why this is so special because it deals with our culture and our culture is our power. We got turned away by integration. We gave up some things, you know. Yes, we did. But that's why we have to bring back Paul Robeson, all the giants who told us the truth and told us that we're a great people, but not only a great people, we are a spiritual people. No matter what happened to us, we don't have that hatred in our hearts and the people who try to oppress us because we know they're in pain, not us. And no matter what the struggle is, we go straight ahead. Again, Ron, you put together a most incredible group of beautiful brothers and sisters. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Again, let's give it up for Randy Weston. All right, wake up. Wake up. Wake up, Diaspora. Giving God the praise, only God is worthy to be praised. On behalf of all the honorees, all the honorees, please stand. Including my sisters, Julianne Malvo, Adriana Turl, and Kichi Taifa, all the honorees. If you are a member of IBW, please stand. If you're part of the Institute of the Black World 21st Century, please stand. If you're part of the NARPR, the National Association of African Americans and Reparations, please stand. If you're part of NCOPA, please stand. If you're Pan-African, please stand. If you're nationalist, please stand. If you're a nationalist, please stand. If you're a part of Republican New Africa, please stand. Deacons for Defense, please stand. We stand on the shoulders collectively of the ancestors, righteous ancestors, people like Dr. Mario Bedelli. Gaidi Obadelli, Reverend Milton Henry. We stand on the shoulders. Reparations Ray, the Honorable Shokwe Lamuma. We stand on the shoulders Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey. We stand on the shoulders, Dr. Dorothy Irene Height. We stand on the shoulders of brothers and sisters who taught us to be fired up for the liberation of our people. All we need to do is go within and discover the power of the Most High God that is within us with that power that's in you. Connect with the power that is in you. All we need to be where we want to be and to do what we want to do is already within. Hashe. I say, let's give it up for Reverend Joanne Watson. Now it's almost time, but I want to quickly acknowledge, I think I saw Sister Lisa Aubrey. Is she in the house? Sister Lisa Aubrey, is she here? I just want to acknowledge her. She's the president of the African Studies Association. Rebuilding. Y'all remember Dr. John Henry Clark and Sharshi McIntyre and all those good people. Lisa is the successor in rebuilding the African Heritage Studies Association, and we're going to be partnering with her in that. And also, we would be remiss if we did not 
at least give a shout out to our Paramount chief. That's what I've given. I've dubbed it. I give him a new title. He got all kinds of titles. I call him the Paramount chief. And so we want to at least give a shout out to our Paramount chief, Dr. J. Dr. Leonard Jeffries is in the house. Let's, Dr. J, our Paramount chief. Dr. J, our Paramount chief is in the house. Dr. J is in the house. All right, as they say, and there's a good fight on the night too, boy, a good fight on the night. Let's, let's get ready to rumble. And I like to rumble. Let's get ready to party. Before we do that, let me just make a couple of quick announcements. Again, don't forget tomorrow morning, bright and early, 8 o'clock, be lined up with your badges for access and security, because you know we have to have security clearance for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and also Dr. Mayanana Karinga. If you have not purchased one yet, we want to make sure that a lot of red, black, and green flags, and we are reasserting. In fact, I'm arguing this ought to be the universal African flag, and August 17th, Garvey's birthday, should be universal African flag day. So get your flag. To leave here without an IBWT, I mean, without a State of the Black World t-shirt also, right? And tomorrow we'll also be talking about ways in which people can contribute. I must say, we have been so moved by the expressions of encouragement. My wife said today, one lady just, just grabbed her and rushed up on and said, I'm sorry, I don't have it right here today. She said, but I am going to contribute as soon as I get home. I'm writing a check to IBW for $500. That spirit is here with people understanding the work we're doing. So brothers and sisters, let's all stand for Harambe and then let's go party. Shout out to the People's Organizations for Progress as well. Larry Hamm is in the house. They've been so instrumental the local planning committee. I'll tell you what, rather than Harambe, let's just say it's nation time seven times. All right, can we do that? In honor of Amiri Baraka, let's say nation time seven times, okay? One, two, three. It's nation time. 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 Right. Okay, now the, the party will be in, somebody tell me what room is in? In the New Jersey room. And that's downstairs through the through the marketplace. And there'll be people there to show you where it is. And the DJ, what's the DJ's name? What the DJ? Yeah, I know, but he got he got a he got a handle. Anyway, y'all enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. Let's go party. For those of you who are at the um, at the Double Tree, the last shuttle back to the Double Tree will be one o'clock. So you got a little space. The last shuttle will be at one o'clock, but you got to be ready for that. Thank you so much.